Good afternoon to all. Welcome to this open open class from the Global MBA, the, the UI. Um, firstly, I, I would like to thank them for allowing me to participate. Uh, I'm Carlos Lozano, I'm director of the, the Global MBA, and as well I'm managing director from BICG, a small boutique consulting company. Um, they asked me to come up with uh, with a topic, right? And I came up with with this title because I definitely think that uh, nowadays we ought to do something to to brand ourselves, right? And uh, I think personal branding has become extremely important in all in all aspects, right? And we ought to take um, a step on it and. Uh, and I was thinking, well, how could we really personal brand ourselves? And there are plenty of different tools available nowadays. But I certainly feel that uh, LinkedIn is uh, one of the one of the best. That's the reason because I link personal branding with with LinkedIn, right? So uh, said that. Um, Firstly, uh, I would like to to do my agenda. I mean, briefly, I'm going to touch upon the importance of social media. I'm just going to go very quickly through some slides, as I think that uh, a big part of the audience already is familiar with it, right? So I want to just introduce the topic as such. Then I would like to touch upon the LinkedIn demographics, what's happening with these uh, social media, right? How is it growing? Where is it really being used, etc.? Uh, and then I will move into a more t kind of practical session around some key tips on how to use LinkedIn, right? I mean, what can you do to really develop a, a strong and powerful profile? And then I will um, emphasize at the end on some of the new applications. I mean, as you guys may know, LinkedIn is constantly growing and growing. I mean, new applications have been added and are being added on a, on a constant basis. So it's really quite difficult to... Well, to, to catch up with it, but I mean, there are some some there that I would like to share with you, and then finally give you some some final some final tips, right? So, uh, obviously, again today I'm competing against a very important football match, so I will try to to go through it quickly. Although at the end we will have as well an, an open session on on some questions, but by all means, if someone has a question in the middle of these of the of this talk of the speech, I mean, just interrupt, and then we can I will try to answer that. Okay? Good. Important on social media. I mean, definitely uh, social media really seen as a very powerful marketing tool. I mean, there are a lot of questions around uh, social media. What is it really? Is it, should it be used for professional purposes? Should it be used for personal uh, purposes? I mean, what's the best use of, of social media nowadays, right? nowadays, right? Uh, and that's the first thing. I mean, how do you use it and, and for what, right? I mean, should you use it for some t sort of bringing out charts or conversations? Do, do you really need to use it to find jobs, etc.? So there's a very big debate around that. But the fact is that really social media nowadays has entered our life and is covering all these topics, right? I mean, being defined, I mean, by Kaplan and Halen as a group of internet-based applications that's built on ideological and technological foundation of Web 2.0 and that allow to the creation and exchange of user-generated content. So that's the... Uh, that's the definition of what social media is, and guess what? LinkedIn obviously is part of it. I mean, you may see LinkedIn among one of these multiple uh, companies and logos that are part of the social uh, media wall, right? And seen in this way, it's a really big mess. You really could not order it. But if you really see it on this other manner, I mean, you really can start clustering the different, uh, the different social media uh, companies and around different type of topics, right? And obviously, the one that we're going to talk today, LinkedIn is, where is LinkedIn nowadays? I mean, it will be as part here. What we call them the niche networks, it falls in into that, into that particular topic. Obviously, you have Facebook here as part of the traditional social networks. You might have uh, Twitter around here on the live streams once, and then obviously all the rest of the different um, social media company, you have to distribute it around these different topics. But I mean, what really impressed me on this picture, again, is how big social media really is and how many different topics are covered on the social media and what it really means for us. 
Uh, this, this is just a, a clear an allusion of what is the most relevant social media uh, network on each of the different companies. Obviously, Facebook is the one that, please come in, that, uh, that, con that is more present in more, more different countries. Some stats on the use of social media. What's relevant here is that, uh, as, you, as you may see down here, right, 91% uh, 91, 91 of the companies, right, have some sort of integration with, with Facebook. Right, uh, it's uh, sorry, um, <clears throat> and on the email marketing efforts, right? LinkedIn is, is not so big. What actually is surprising, but that goes back that not that not all the the companies use LinkedIn, right? I mean, so that's uh, that's kind of, kind of surprised me a little bit. It's just 40. 48%. Though, on the other hand, and we'll see some stats later, 80% of the companies in the U in the U.S. use uh, LinkedIn to find people, right? So it's perhaps they do not use so much LinkedIn for the social for the marketing efforts, but they use LinkedIn to find people. So there are two different angles of the say. Uh, I mean, there are two different things, but uh, what kind of uh, kind of surprised me that in those those stats, right? And well, you you might see it here. Eighty percent of companies use uh, LinkedIn as a primary tool to find employees. I mean, that's based upon some data in the in the U.S. Right? Fact is that our talent, right? I mean, this is my view. I mean, talent has become very commodity. It's, it's a commodity, right? It's really very 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 difficult that someone could differentiate from each other. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of very good graduates of. Everyone uh, speaks languages. I mean, there are a lot of things that are kind of taken for granted. I mean, it's tough to say, but it's a reality. I mean, yeah, it's, you have a good, you have a, a good degree, you have a good MBA, you have a good, uh, you, you speak a couple of languages, you have some experience, you have been doing some work in in different type of communities, etc. It's really becoming every time more difficult to differentiate yourself, right? And then you ask yourself a question: How can I really do it? And a way to do it. Maybe to work on you, on yourself as a personal brand, right? And that's that goes back to the to the name of my, uh, I mean, on the title of the of this speech. I mean, what can you do for yourself to brand yourself, right? I mean, to really become a brand. And I'm not going to talk right now about it. If if the right use of the social media should be to brand yourself or to be yourself, right? I mean, because that's another question: Are you a brand or are you an individual that are using social media, right? But if we are, if we assume that right now what you need to do in order to differentiate yourself is to create yourself as a brand, right? Do some sort of personal branding to differentiate yourself. What you do ought to do is then leverage one of the way to, one of the things you can do is leverage social media, right? And how can you leverage social media? Well, guess guess what? I mean, you can start using Twitter. You can have a blog, right? I mean, where you can write about about different things that interest you or about different things that you feel strong about. And as well, you can use uh, obviously LinkedIn. I mean, that is part of your personal branding strategy, right? So. Reality is in the past. Uh, what we did, I mean, the only way that you could differentiate yourself was you just sent a resume out and people start putting some pictures up there. Yeah, I sent a CV with a picture. Wow, I sent a CV with a nice picture. I sent a CV written in a way that is very, in a very in thick paper that people could really feel, oh, yeah, this guy must be a, or this, this lady. I mean, it's an interesting, it's an interesting par, uh, person that could work for a company, right? That happens. 20 years ago, right? In the 90s, we could start differentiating ourselves a little bit by entering certain, I mean, certain websites, the way that you introduce certain information in, in different boards, right? I mean, that's how you st started competing, and, and that's the way that you started to position yourself, right? Nowadays, the way that you need to position yourself my view is through tools, through tools like LinkedIn or Visual CV and Zoomline, etc. I mean, there are a couple of tools that we're going to talk later about, right? But I mean, that's that's the way that you really can make make a, some sort of a, of a difference. So, the question is, how many of you have Googled yourself? Everyone? No. Yeah, anyone? Has anyone not Googled himself? Well, a couple of people perhaps. Well, the reality is that Google has become fundamental for us. I mean, what comes up when you Google your name, right? And obviously, you can argue it could come up nice things or bad things, right? 
I mean, a lot of girls, right, when they Google themselves, suddenly they see a lot of nasty pictures, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it happens. It's a reality, right? Why is that? Because obviously when you, when you go through the Google algorithms, algorithms, the first thing they, I mean, images are very important for Google. So whatever has an image comes up first, right? So imagine a website with a lot of images and big images comes up first, right, than, a, than some sort of information that do not have so many images. So first lesson learned, when you do some sort of profiles in any sort of tool like LinkedIn, what you need to do is put up a picture, right? Okay, that's the, that's obviously, that's, that's a small tip, right? That's an advice. But that's the reason behind that, right? But fact is that nowadays, if you're not on Google, you do not exist. And the whole, the, everything what you need to do in order to brand yourself is what can I do to put myself more up on Google, right? Particularly, I need, to, I need to be on the first page because once you're on the second page, forget about it, right? So, in my case, if I put just, if I write Carlos Lozano on Google, what comes up is the actor. Carlos Lozano, the actor, right? And all these things about SMS, etc. In this case, I mean, we are just uh, put it with EOI mixed, uh, mixed with that, and then it comes up a couple, uh, first, the first thing that's, that shows up, guess what? It's my LinkedIn profile, right? It's the first one that's up there. I like that. That's it. I have my LinkedIn profile there. I mean, that's what I'm working on on LinkedIn. Well, then after that, amazing, a blog, some sort of comment I made on a blog, right? <laughs> and it happens to be it's a blog here, the EOI, right? And then some other comments, right? From, I mean, here's some projects, some, some people are doing some projects, a toy project and etc. right? And then you start going down here, I have two videos, right, as well, that I appear on. Well, it's, it's interesting. Reality, what we're trying to do, or uh, what we're trying to do here through LinkedIn at the end is not just work on LinkedIn, but as well position ourselves in Google through, through LinkedIn, right? So, that's what I say. We need to maximize our, our Google juice, right? And by all means, if anyone has any question or any comment or any different view, interrupt, uh, interrupt me. In terms of demographics, very quickly, LinkedIn, 101 million users. Uh, this is data from January 2011, right? 40% uh, or 41% female, 60% male. Uh, by age, you, you may see here, main users are between 25, 25, 34, this group 35% up to 55, 36%. Younger people are starting to use it as well, right? But it's obviously, they have a lesser use of, uh, of Google, uh, of, sorry, of Google, of, of LinkedIn than other uh, social media, as, as maybe Facebook, uh, 20 in, in Spain, etc. right? Uh, in terms of demo demographic distribution, interesting. North America, about 47%, 53%, the rest of the world, right? And, um, so, and of that 23% 20, in Europe and the rest scattered uh, all over the place. In terms of countries, main users, I mean the top 10, top 10 countries made up 76% of the uh, LinkedIn users. B very, very big in the U.S., 44 million, right? Okay, 250 people, 44 million, quite, quite high percentage. Uh, interesting to see, the, for example, in Holland, relatively small, 2.6 million use uh, LinkedIn, right? I mean, they, they really, they, this guy, I mean, perhaps, this country, perhaps it has to do with the mentality. It's a trade, trade uh, country. I mean, that they always have to be very open to the, to the outside world, etc. But that's the reason because the Dutch are using a lot uh, LinkedIn. In the case of Spain, 1.6 million, million users nowadays. And interesting as well as to see is the, how it is scattered between uh, big and smaller companies. Reality is that, uh, yeah, I mean, the users of LinkedIn with um, quite high percentages, oh, sorry, they come from, from bigger companies, 42% uh, in general. If you go to the U.S., it's about 41%. So it's about 40% of the users. They, they work in bigger companies, over 10,000 people. If you compare that, obviously, to... I mean, to the Spanish uh, industrial uh, uh, network. I mean, in, in Spain, there are just 600, 700 companies, over 1,000 employees, right? I mean, then you're, you start putting as well things in context. I mean, this is world, worldwide in information. But I, I found it quite interesting, uh, data. In terms of users, not a surprise, high tech. 
high tech industries, the main users of LinkedIn, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's something that comes natural, right? So 60% uh, of the, of the users, they, they work at the high tech industry. Surprising to see 30.3% of the finance industry. I mean, there are not so many finance people out there, or I would assume that there are not so many bankers, but I mean, it seems to me that it's, it's very networked, networked in the, on that industry, I mean, to use these type of tools. And then you start going down, surprisingly, uh, at least for for me, was to see that just government type of people just use 3.7 percent of the people just use LinkedIn, right? I mean that p potentially may be driven by the fact that perhaps it's not used to, it's not allowed to use LinkedIn at government at uh, government institutions. I mean at work or something like that. But or perhaps it's the fact that they are civil civil servants and they do not feel that they need to use LinkedIn. Right, because already there are civil servants, so there is no need for that. Well, I don't know. I, I've not studied the psychologists behind that, but it's just a, an interesting, interesting data. The uh, equally as well in terms of the job function, sales. It's not a surprise that the sales people are the ones that really see this as a very interesting tool. Not necessarily just to look for a job, but more important to find new clients, new leads, new prospects, do some sort of business generation, etc. So, just uh, the key facts, I mean, it was founded in 2003, reached 1 million uh, users in 2004, nowadays 200 countries, and then we, uh, LinkedIn is used by 69 of the Fortune 100 companies, I mean, not all of them use it, well, surprisingly, but it's, it's a fact. Again, it's uh, half a profile in LinkedIn, but probably they use LinkedIn to find people, right? I mean, uh, that's, that's what I mean by that. And uh, one million companies have LinkedIn company pages, and we will talk about the company, uh, the company uh, profile later on. So, so, okay, why is it working? I think LinkedIn is very safe, right? It's quite safe. There's no, I mean, you you really can uh, manipulate it. It's easy to do, but it's, it's, it's very difficult that there's not really a lot of confidential data there, right? On the other hand, I mean, there's relatively low low level of advertising. I mean, there's some advertisement there, but not really not excessive. On the other hand, as well, is uh, the fact that you do not have a, um, how do you call it, a visual media. A lot of visual media, there, like videos, etc., as well, make, it makes it safer. It makes it quite safe, right? I mean, other social media that where you have videos uploaded, etc., just by by nature, it becomes unsafe, right? By the fact that you could have those type of things. So LinkedIn, up until now, do not have, the, does not have it, right? So it's, it makes it quite safe. So that's as well. Is I think it's very important because at the end of the day, this is a professional network. People just want to make sure that that data does not disappear. There's not not strange things happening with it, right? So, what can we do to develop a, a better LinkedIn profile? Well, first, I mean, there is uh, one important thing is that LinkedIn rewards action. And what do I mean by that? Is this is something that you need to work on a daily basis to a degree. I mean, it's good. I mean, just think of LinkedIn as another tool that's out there. Just give it 10 minutes a day. Yes, to enter, you open it up, to, you see what's happening, what's, what's new, right? What has uh, any, any sort of updates that happened, any changes on, the, on some of the, uh, the people, of, uh, on some of your connections, etc. But really, you need to, to enter it, on a, on a, in my view, on a daily basis, to really make a very good use of the, of the tool. Follow the tips. I mean, I, I do not declare myself as an expert of, uh, of LinkedIn. What I am is a good, strong user of LinkedIn. For me, that's been very useful, right? And that's the reason because I want to share that knowledge with all of you, right? But I do not consider myself as an extreme expert on LinkedIn, right? I have to say, just a good, a good, a super user or a good user, right? And then, uh, as LinkedIn is constantly growing and there are new tools being added, explore the new tools because you can be surprised. I mean, there are a couple of them that uh, that are quite, quite, quite useful. Good. That's my profile. That's me. I, I do not want to say that I have a perfect profile, right? But I mean, I've been out there for quite a long time. I've been using it for about, I would say, you know, four years or something like that, if not, not longer, right? Uh, quite, a, quite a lot of connections, right? I mean, I have 670 connections. And in my case, I only connect to people that I really know because I, I receive a lot of invitation from people that 
come out from who knows where, but I just accept people that I 100% I know who they are, right? Who they are, have I dealt with them, etc. Right? And the same as when I invite people, I only invite people that I that I know, right? Not just I'm trying to invite Obama or I'm trying to invite whoever, right? Just because I want to become connected to him, right? No, it's just the people that, that I know, right? So. Um, if we start with the tips, I mean, first thing, upload a good photo, right? I don't know if that photo is a good photo or not. I mean, other people have different have, have different sort of photos, but bear in mind, bear in mind that that photo is a photo that is uh, that is seen by by everyone. I mean, if you go to the internet, the people will end up seeing they, they will end up seeing that photo. So, having a photo with a can of beer celebrating something. Maybe good if you perhaps you are already retired, you have enough money, etc., and you're in another in another mood, right? But perhaps if you are still in the market and if you will uh, want to give some sort of professional impression, perhaps you you have to go with a with a different sort of picture. What's the importance of the picture? Is what I told you before. I mean, when Google runs its algorithms, it looks after pictures, right? So if you do not have a picture in your uh, in your profile, automatically your profile is not complete. Your, your, your profile is not complete, what means that uh, you, you will not show up so high in the, in the rankings, right? So it's something that you have to, to bear in mind. Uh, complete your entire profile. Okay, well, I mean, there's a lot to complete, and uh, I do not suggest you that you complete the LinkedIn profile while you are at work or while you are studying or something like that. I mean, you need to take your time to complete it step by step because there's a lot of things to write up there, right? And while I was preparing this presentation, I really come up with, well, there's a lot of things that I need to improve on my, actually, my profile that I've not updated, etc. I I did not do it, all of it, right? But Right now, I, I need to take some action on my on my personal profile. I mean, thanks to this to this speech. Reality is that in the profile includes your different previous jobs, right? I mean, you have a different page and write them write them up in a nice manner. Just do not say that you are sales manager, right? Or what, whatever, right? If that whatever, for example, was a great company that was based in an emerging market. Spice it up, right? Sales manager specialized in products at the emerging markets. Diggy, diggy. I mean, write something that is creative, really something that makes a difference, right? I mean, you have the ability. I mean, perhaps, I mean, here I have a couple of, of, of titles director of global MBA or associate professor or business improvement director. I mean, perhaps those, yeah, that's the title. What do they say? They do not say much, right? You, know, you need to go to the experience and you will see it later where perhaps I have their an opportunity to talk more creatively about the jobs. And that's what you have to do, right? I mean, use it as a marketing tool for yourself, right? Do not include the email address. A lot of people put up their, their email address. I mean, and that is just for people that that work as recruiters or just people that are a media junks or some sort of thing. I mean, it's not necessary to put up your, 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 your email, right? It will be crazy. I mean, you give it up to everyone. You, wanna have, you want everyone in the world to know your email address? Perhaps you want, right? I mean, but I guess, guess what? If you put up your email address up here, right, somewhere, then it will appear on all the searches that people do on Google or whatever, and then you will be in all sorts of lists of all sorts of products, right? So advice not to put up your email address there, obviously. Um, use uh, keywords, very important, and the keywords, uh, they're relevant because obviously the headhunters, they will start looking and searching after certain keywords, right? So if you want to be an expert, as in my case, I'm an expert on Lean Sigma, for example, right? The word Lean Sigma, or Six Sigma, needs to appear somewhere, right? So make sure that I use it. I mean, if I go to project management, as well, I put it up there. If I know German, somewhere I need to write down that I, that I know German, right? Because people look after those, I mean, there are some words that headhunters will look after, right? And they need to be on your on your profile. But I will come back to that uh, on, on that later, right? Then obviously, if you go down the the profile, education, recommendation, we'll talk later about them. Websites, yeah, put up your different websites that you, I mean, from your companies or places where you work. Uh, put as well a link to your blog if you have a blog. I know a lot of people here have a blog, right? I mean, it will be good to link it up again. Very important, if you have a blog, you will appear higher up on Google, 
right? By the f only by the fact that you have block, for good or for bad, right? But it's something. It, it means that you're connected in some in somehow, right? And equally as well, put up your uh, Twitter profile as well. It will uh, it, it will give you some what I call some Google juice, right? A lot of things to do. It's a pain in the back. But uh, but it's it's worth doing it. These things that you have here, your pub uh, your public profile, this is something that you should add in your Outlook. I mean, when you when you write emails and your signature, I mean, it's recommended as well that you put your uh, your public profile on LinkedIn so that people could could uh, could see it and uh, immediately they click on it, right, and then they can see see who you are and what you do, right, is is recommended. And as well, LinkedIn gives you the possibility to put it with a nice tag. I mean, there's a LinkedIn tag that that shows there. And my emails, I have not put it there, right? I mean, I have enough signatures with my company, etc. But I've seen a lot of people start using the LinkedIn profile, and I think it's a good thing too. I think a good thing to have. As well, uh, you may have seen, uh, I don't know if I have one of my, my business cards here. Okay, let me see if I... Okay, do we have a business card here or not? Well, perhaps. There is uh, the one that I, that I have from the school uh, has a BIM code. You know the the, 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 the the a code like that one that we see up there, right? I mean, if up, oh, can you see that that one? I mean, my, the business card has that code. I mean, if you put with your phone, you read it with your phone immediately, uh, you will be able to see my LinkedIn profile, right? So again, another thing, uh, it's and uh, recently I was in the US. I was in the I was at the MIT last week, right? And I, I was giving away those cards. And even the people at MIT said, wow, oh, this is cool. I've not seen it. And then they were reading it with their phones, etc. I think it's something that may be coming, right? Anyhow, said so that, um, El, you have then the, on the, on, if, you, if you start building up your profile, you have as well the opportunity to write a summary about you, right? This summary is a very good opportunity to write something motivational. As I say, it's a motivational communication tool. Just a, in my case, look, I mean, I just put it here very professional, blah, change and transformation exec with broad experience in all aspects of uh, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of things up there. Uh, by reading it, I said, look, I think that you, you need to put as well a mixture of more professional but as well of personal aspects. I think you need to give it a personal touch as well because that it goes back to differentiation, right? The other people just do not want to hear that is a transformation executive that knows everything about that as well they want to they wanna know a little bit more about me, right? This is a good place to put something about you, right? What interests you, but just bear in mind, this is just a summary. It does not need to be a novel, right? You have a, a little bit of space there and you should use it as an elevator speech. I mean, are you familiar with the concept of elevator speech? You're going in, into an elevator with someone, and in within 30 seconds or in 20 seconds, you need to tell them whatever whatever your project is or whatever your work is, etc. Here as well, just in three, four lines, the key ideas, what you want to communicate to someone, right? And the the CV, right, uh, people say, look, I mean, do I really need to write everything what I've done in your life and chronologically one after another, etc.? It's not necessary. I mean, this is something, it's you decides what you want to write up there. I mean, when you put up your, your CV, I mean, there may be things that you just want to, you can do it in a chronological order, you can as well put in a chronological order, but not necessarily put in all the dates, right? You can... Uh, Certain jobs, perhaps, try to forget about them and and write about something else, right? There is there is not a set rule there, right? I mean, how you ought to do that, right? Uh, what it needs to be is interesting, interesting, so that people can, that people call you, right? And again. Use industry keywords for search, fun uh, search functions. If you are a very good chemist or a very good engineer on certain type of technology, make sure that that particular technology shows up there somewhere, right? And some sort of uh, tools that you may have used, make sure that in somewhere they appear, right? On your CV, on different parts of your profile, right? And again, later we'll talk about the skills. It's a new functionality that has been developed at LinkedIn. Uh, the, then the experience, I mean, you have the opportunity of, to write down, obviously, a little bit about uh, each, of your, each of your jobs. Interesting there, 
is to, to make sure that you get a recommendation for each of your jobs, right? I mean, that's a very important thing, right? The famous recommendation. Ask for them. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that as well allows to complete your profile is if you have a certain number of connections, right, and certain number of recommendations. There is nothing wrong by asking someone to recommend you, right? Obviously, if you look at recommendations, the ones that are as well more valued are the ones that come from your boss, right, or from a co-worker instead of from a person that works for you, right? Although that as well is very interesting, right? But I mean, try to try to ask for that, right? Uh, and equally, in the same manner, as you ask for a recommendation, offer to give them away. I mean, if you are really impressed with someone, why not? Give, an, give a recommendation about that individual. As you know, on recommendations, you have the ability to accept them or not. I mean, you get a, someone writes a recommendation about you, and then you can say, look, I like what this guy is saying, I accept, and then it shows up in your profile, or no, he's only saying rubbish about me, I do not accept it, it does not appear, right? So you still have some sort of control or what comes up in your profile or, or not. And the, the profile updating is as well important. Why is it important? Because every time that you just change something on your profile, bloop, it appears. I mean, when you when you end when one of your connections goes into into LinkedIn, right? Suddenly he will see ah, Carlos has updated whatever his uh, personal experience. He has updated his summary. He has updated his photo. He has updated X Y Z. So that means that you are getting some exposure, right? Then people see what are you up to, etc. It's a, it's an opportunity to to sell yourself, right? Updating things. But on the other hand, it does not make any sense that you update every day something, right? And then because people just will. I mean, they will hate it. I mean, what's happening with Carlos every day is, is into, in, into LinkedIn doing things, etc. right? The, um, what I've marked here is, um, I mean, one of the things that is very interesting is these viewers of this profile also viewed, right? I mean, I don't know if you have noticed this box, right, on LinkedIn, but it gives you an idea as well. I mean, when they go to look at you, who else are they looking Right, and then you can start comparing yourself. Do I really want to be compared with these people or not? I mean, it happens to be that on this particular day, uh, some of the people that view my profile as well watch at some people at the UI and some people at BICG. Right? Well, that, well, that's fine. I mean, that it's not it's logical, right? I mean, that they will uh, see those people. If if here will appear some sort of picture of some something or somewhere or who knows what, it will surprise me. That what's happening? Why do I appear in connection with this individual? Right, something that you ought to to look at. Right, equally as well, what I say is stay stay vigilant and observe who's watching you. Right, I mean you may have noticed as well who viewed your profile. I mean this is a statistic that you can see every day. I mean who viewed your profile during the last seven days. Right, and I'm talking about the basic version here. I, I'm not a I'm not a premium user of LinkedIn. You know that there is a version where you can pay money. Right and you have a basic uh, version that's for free. I'm just using the basic version, right? But here you have the ability to say, look, 11 people looked at my profile in the last seven days, right? And I appeared on 38 searches. I mean, there were some searches that people did, right? And I appeared 38 times on those searches. Obviously, as I'm nosy, you say, look, who viewed my profile during the last 11 days, right? In the, who are these 11 people, sorry? So I went there. And then, okay, these were my viewers, right? Eva Fernandez, senior recruiter at Accenture. Beatriz, uh, and then, okay, all, all, it could be some sort of people that work in the recruitment, uh, uh, recruitment industry that may have seen my profile. Okay, interesting. Interesting to see that, right? So it's some data how you're positioning yourself out there, right? So this other functionality is, uh, I mean, the, it's, it's in beta right now in LinkedIn, but you will see that the upper tag is called the skills, the skills functionality. Um, this was a demand given by all the headhunters. They said, look, I mean, we really would like to have some sort of tool that allow us to identify people based upon their skills, right? So instead of having to look through the profile and doing some searches with words, etc., writing on the, on the search box, I don't know, Lean Sigma or uh, business improvement, etc., he said, why don't you just do not create some categories, right? And then people by themselves 
who then categorize, the, categorize, categorize themselves, right? And this is up for everyone. So in my case, I say, look, who are some of the skills that I may have, right? And bear in mind, there are about 10,000 skills that you can have. And it's very interesting when you look at those skills because it gives you a percentage of LinkedIn users that have the skills and if it's an uptrend or downtrend. For example, if you write down iPhone, as a skill, I mean, a lot of it's 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 the one that more people are writing down nowadays, and as they are big users of iPhone and they know how to use it, etc. Very very strange. In this case, I just put you up uh, my profile, uh, skills that I have, and I've uh, I've signed up right for the ones that I've mentioned here: Six Sigma, the Meg, Trace. I mean, these are different type of, and this is not things that I have written down. These are things that I've selected, right? I mean, there is a selection menu of different types of skills that you can select, right? So what does it mean? That means that every time that, for example, a person may do some sort of uh, search looking after German speakers that are specialized on Six Sigma and on e-commerce, just to say something, I will appear because I've already introduced those tag words into my profile, right? It's introducing like tag words as at Google, etc. It's, it's basically the same, uh, it's the same mentality, right? If you, oh, this is what I talked to you before, right? Make sure that you request some, uh, some recommendations, right? And in, obviously you can use the standard text. I mean, I normally use the standard text, right? Or, uh, if there are people that uh, I've just seen, uh, I mean, on a regular contact, for example, some people on, on this class, if I, would, if I would establish a connection with you, as we are seeing each other on a regular basis, I would just write your standard text, right? If it's a person that I've not seen for a long time and I really want to get in touch with him again, or uh, it's an individual that perhaps is a, a business contact, etc., then I say, look, I will then put some effort and I... Uh, and, and I will I, I will write a, a personal a personal text on that right for the for the recommendations right important thing on the recommendation is uh, obviously to thank to thank those comments right M give yourself some times when people write something about you so well to send back some sort of email to them or get them a call here thanks for this recommendation that you have given me and then equally as well. Uh, Ask them if they want, would like to have a recommendation from you, right? I mean, I think it's a give or take. Obviously, it's much stronger to have a recommendation from someone that, and then that you do not give a recommendation for that individual. But I think it's part of the code of code of use, right, of LinkedIn, that people give each other recommendations in some cases, right? Um, in terms of uh, joint groups, I think it's very important to be a member of uh, what they call groups, right? It's as well another possi possibility that you have down there. There are all sorts of groups, groups linked to companies, to universities, group link links to hobbies, etc. The key here is not to have too many groups, right? Just have the ones that are really relevant for you, right? As, uh, well, it, firstly, it will give an idea who you are, what are your interests, what is important. Uh, on the other hand, obviously, it will, uh, if you are in a lot of groups, you will receive a lot of emails, a lot of uh, debates. I mean, you will participate in a lot of debates, etc. What's not always the, the best thing. Interesting as well is the ability to create your own group, right? If you have a really certain type of interest on something and you really want to communicate, why not create your own group, right? It's, it's as well as a possibility, something that you can do, right? Take the lead, right? I mean, and that obviously, this is dangerous because people could create, I could create a group about a company, right, without really being part of that company or just being an employee of that company and not necessarily being, uh, I mean, representing the company on those type of actions. I mean, that's the danger that you may have when you create these groups, right? And then someone invites you to a group and you, you think it's an official group of Harvard Business School and it's not the official group of Harvard Business School. It's just someone that has put some sort of logo up there, etc. So... That's, that's, that's one of the dangers that you may have with these, these groups. You really need to understand who's behind that and if those groups are endorsed by the institution or the company that you think is, is behind that, that logo, right? And uh, obviously, as part of the, of the group, there's a lot of activity associated with that. Again, I would recommend to participate on those discussions, right? I mean, every group has some sort of discussions. Make sure you, you participate on that. It will help as well your, your profile, right? Contacts. Uh, I mean, as we are going to go very, as you may imagine, we're going to touch upon these different things. The contacts, uh, 
important to have as many as possible, right? And good contacts. I mean, for those not so familiar with LinkedIn, the ones that are in in yellowish are it means that are people that are growing their expanding their their, their networks. The ones that are in black are people that are more stagnant. I mean, they're not putting so much attention on on that. Um, obviously, here on, the, on all the different connections that you have, you have a lot of data and where they're located, which companies they work for, etc. That you can, uh, which functions do they work? You have it as well down there. So use that data. I use it a lot. I mean, when I when I tend to go, for example, to a, to a foreign country or to see a, a company, etc., I always do a, a LinkedIn search. I mean, who works at Banco Santander? In Germany, if I'm going to Germany, a bank or something there. Do you have any sort of connection that uh, is related to that? And then uh, I may use it, I may not use it, but just I do that. Uh, I do that search to understand if there is someone there that perhaps interests me to call him for any reason or or whatever, right? But it, it's a wonderful tool to use in, on that manner, right? Um, I don't know. When I recently I, I was in uh, Argentina as so well. When I went to Argentina, I did my as well LinkedIn, Argentina, Buenos Aires, banking, etc. I was interested to to visit a bank over there. I mean, who has a contact there, etc. Right? At the end of the day, I found a person that had a contact in a bank, so uh, I was able to one of the days go out for dinner with it, with that individual. Good, bad. Did something come out? No. Unfortunately, I did not make any business. Right? But I had a good night on that particular particular evening. Right? So. Anyway, anyhow, in terms of the connections, uh, I mean, there are many ways to, to grow them. What I will advise is to not get overly crazy. I mean, invite the people that you really want to be to have part of your network, right? The ones that you really do not want to be connected with, forget about that. Now, it's, this is not a competition. It's not about who has more connections or less connections. I see some people that have thousands of connections or whatever just because they invite absolutely everyone, right? The key thing is to connect with people that in somehow you could contact if you need to, right? I mean, that's for me is the, my rule of thumb. Right. I mean, accept a connection from someone that, in, if really it comes to the moment, you can call him, send an email, etc. Right. There as well to search for people. I mean, you have a function called advanced search. Uh, you could find a hell of a lot of people uh, of, of these individuals based upon different parameters. Right. So uh, what I will advise you is again. In the people section, go to advanced search, right? That's normally the one at the, at the right, and use it, right, to find the, the right individuals, right? For the invitations, uh, uh, well, try to personalize this note as much as possible if you have some time, right? I mean, I think it's always nicer to, to become an, an invitation to connect on a personalized manner than just read this. I would like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. Okay, fine. Depends who, who it is, right? Uh, very important is uh, how do you know Giuseppe, right? Because this allows you to classify the, the your the different people. I mean, is a classmate, is a professional contact, etc. When then you do your uh, analysis on your different contacts, you will see them categorized by those uh, those sections, right? Uh. And, and here, for example, I mean the the use that you that you do with the with the connections. So, I mean, this, for example, is Farah, Farah Afsal. I mean, what, what I what I tend to do, and I guess that everyone else does it, right? I mean, yeah, she's a connector of mine, and they end up looking, perhaps, I mean, who is she connected to, right? Then I click on her profile. I, as well, you have the ability to close your profile. I mean, that's as well some, something people do not know. Or perhaps not not know so much. I mean, if you, if you want that no one sees your your connections, you can do so. You, you can do it that manner. I mean, no one can see my connections. Point. It's something that I only a lot of recruiter, uh, the recruitment, the the recruiters, they do it. I mean, they may be connected to you, but then you you, you try to enter the profile and you see everything about them. But if you see their connections, they do not allow you to see their connections because obviously they are worried that another recruiter goes in there and sees all their connections and then kind of takes them in some way, obviously because that's the work, right? But in my case, if they, do I have a problem if, uh, I don't know, if you see my connections? No, I don't care. I mean, if you can see them, it's more. I prefer I prefer that you can see them because if you see someone that you are interested in connecting with, I mean, I may give you an introduction or we can arrange a, some sort of meeting, etc. right? I mean, that's the essence of, of LinkedIn, right? So, and what you may see there, obviously, is... Um, 
it's obviously you see the different connections. I mean, this is perhaps not the best example, but for example, this one I'm connected as well with the Justin Alphonse. Guess what? I mean, this guy is a recruiter, right? He's as well a premium user, as you can see with the IN, right? That means that he's a premium user. It appears that, right? I mean, in this case, I mean, if I would like to contact with Saliha Afal, whatever, then I would say I will ask Farah. Well, I could invite her directly or ask Farah to, to do that, right? It's nice be, for this reason here. Browse your connections, connections to find people you missed or forgot. I mean, that's a reality. I mean, a lot of my classmates, right, from university or whatever, long time ago, means I'm connected with some of them, and then if, I, if, they, if they try to connect me, and then I go to their connection, suddenly I realize that perhaps five, six, seven people that I connected with as well were my friends or were people that, I, that, that I've lost track of, right? And they say, okay, why not try to invite them to my, to my network, right? Okay. The use of LinkedIn for business development purposes, in the same manner as you use, as you try to find people for any other reasons, as well, you can use LinkedIn to do business, right? You say, okay, who is the CEO of this company? Who is the marketing manager of these particular products? Use LinkedIn in that manner. At least you can locate that individual and then try to get in touch with him through your connections or through some sort of direct, direct invite if you, have the, if you are an imprint user, right? The, the contacts, I mean, uh, obviously in, in this case, I mean, uh, and over here, I mean, as you can see, the more connections you have, the more ability you have to invite individuals, right, without using the in-premium facility, right? And just three, I mean, what's incredible here, three, de three degrees away of myself, there are 5.7 million people, right? It's huge, right? I mean, if you, if you think about that, I mean, so in total, you, are, you can introduce yourself to 5.8 million people. That's not bad. I mean, it will be hard to, if, if I do not find who, who, whoever I'm looking for among those 5.8 million, I mean, there's something, perhaps something wrong. Perhaps I'm trying to find someone, someone too, too difficult, right? The um, way, other ways to add connections is by linking uh, your profile with Outlook. Right with Outlook, with Gmail, with Yahoo, etc. LinkedIn is able to go into all those tools and read all your uh, all your uh, address lists and identify if those people are LinkedIn uh, uh, users or not. Right, if they use it with that email address, and then also then you can try to invite them. Right, it it allow, it facilitates uh, your, uh, your, connect, your your connectivity. Right. It's very practical at the beginning. If you are, if you enter LinkedIn for the first time, right? I mean, instead of trying to send emails directly to the people through LinkedIn, etc., I mean, do it through the. In this way, it helps. Uh, it helps a lot, and it saves time. The groups. I mean, we talked briefly about the groups before, right? In my case, I said try not to be part of too many groups. I mean, I happen to be group. I have 29 groups. I think it's too many, right? I mean, it's 20, 20, but just this. It happens to be that uh, I have groups from all sorts of countries that I was working in, uh, etc. Perhaps I need to reduce it a little bit. I have about eight groups of um, of six sigma and project management and so on. Perhaps I mean I, I need to reduce it a little bit. But hey, um, this one over here, BICG. Uh, sorry for that. BICG. This one I, I created. This one. For, uh, for the company that I'm working for and I have some dialogues going on there, it goes back. I mean, I own, create a, a group. I, th I think it's, it's interesting. Uh, in terms of jobs, I mean, uh, if, you go, if you go up here, right, I mean, the jobs one is this next stack, very interesting. What can you find there uh, is uh, possibilities to find jobs. I think that's that's something that interests to everyone, right? If you if you enter that tag automatically, it will display it will display some jobs that are appropriate for you to your profile. I mean, if I, w if I went in there and suddenly these jobs appear. So, I mean, Vice President, Managing Director, Latamo Iberia, or CEO of Spain for a company. I mean, from these two headhunters, these are two headhunters, they thought that perhaps these two jobs may be adequate to my profile. I think, well, that's good. If I'm really interested in trying to change jobs immediately without doing anything else, I could try to, to contact with those recruiters and see if there's any, any possibilities to myself. How do I achieve that? Well, one of the things that you need to look at is, first of all, what we call the Job Seekers Toolkit, right? I mean, you need to have a complete profile. How do you get a, profile, a complete profile? As I told you before, photo, 
recommendations, at least uh, six recommendations, and uh, connections. I think you need to have, uh, I can't remember, it was 35 or 50 connections, but you need to have a, a number of connections as well before your, what they call your profile is complete. But it's something that is very, very important, that each of you completes your, your profile, right? Uh, what, uh, what else is important? In main case, I'm following two companies, and you will see right now what it means to follow to follow companies. When you, what, what is this? Sorry for that. Uh, this, what? what? Jobs up. Okay. The other thing uh, I want to explain you another uh, functionality. What we call here the advanced search. Right? Here I decided to do an example. I said, look, how can I use advanced search to find some jobs? So I said, look, I want to, I'm trying to look for a job in finance, right? I'm trying to look for a job in Spain, in Madrid, 28,001, right, and all companies. So, bloop, I just did it, and guess what? I mean, some jobs appear, there are 23 jobs, right? It's a great way to find, uh, to, I mean, to, uh, to look for, for jobs. I mean, and obviously in this case, Accenture is the one that comes, uh, I mean, this co Accenture is placing a lot of jobs through, uh, through LinkedIn. You can see the, the companies that show up in this search. Accenture, nine jobs. Cisco, one job. Yahoo, one job. Google, one job, etc. right? In the same manner, you could do some sort of search by, based upon the uh, experience and based upon other, uh, other parameters, right? It saves you quite a lot of time. Instead of having to go through a lot of different boards, job, job boards, you have it, a, lot, a lot of the information is up here on, uh, on, on LinkedIn. Uh, the, the inbox, I mean, inbox is just another thing than uh, messages, right? I mean, it's uh, yes, sending messages as in maybe in, in chatting in, in Facebook or in, in, out, in on, on Outlook, right? Um, I mean, one day, I mean, servers were down here at the, at the school, right? For, uh, because they were doing some, some works out there. They were down for two hours. We were communicating among people here in the school with, through LinkedIn, right? So, I mean, through LinkedIn and with our, with our iPhones, right? I mean, with the, with the smartphones, right? So it's something that works out there. It's an, another way of communicating. And obviously, it's the main source of communication with your connections. I mean, you tend to co uh, to communicate with your connections through the through the internal email from from LinkedIn, right? Next tool that I want to show you is the companies. Uh, how how many of you have used this facility, companies at LinkedIn? Anyone? Good. Well. This, uh, this facility here, I mean, as you may remember from my previous profile, I follow two companies. The two companies that I follow are uh, EOI and uh, Instituto Empresa, right? I mean, they're linked to my profile. I mean, I'm, I, I studied at the IE and I work for EOI, so I follow those companies. And you will ask yourself, well, what's so interesting here? Well, the first thing that is interesting is that, as you may see, for example, here the profile of uh, Instituto de Empresa has two new hires in the last 22 hours. Or in the last day, there were one new hire, right? Two days ago, there were two new hires and three recent departures. Why you may think that's interesting? Sorry? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that means this information gives you, 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 start, you start knowing, you say, hey, there are some people that are hiring, some companies that are hiring, and equally as well, you may understand, okay, there are some departures where there are vacancies, or on the other hand, that company is having a tough time, perhaps they're really, uh, uh, they're going through some sort of redundancy program. But, but, but it's data, right? I mean, what you make out of that data is up to you, but it's very interesting data that appears there, right? Obviously, if you click on those two, uh, two new hires, you will know who those individuals are. And what's a great thing to do? When someone gets a new job, you congratulate him. Something like that. I mean, that's how I remember. I mean, this was a long time ago. First job of my wife in Barcelona, Pirelli. I mean, 
Italian marketing manager. She came over from Italy, right, to tire industry in Barcelona. My wife, I mean, it appears on a magazine, right? Typical thing on a magazine, those old days where you had to send a CV, etc. She just sent a letter to this lady, congratulations for your job, blah, 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 nice letter, CV. That's how she got the job. I mean, the, this lady was receiving a lot of CVs or whatever, but when she got a personal letter from someone congratulating her for the new job, etc., she said, okay, I really want to know who this lady is, right? That is writing from Spain, so she invited her over, and the rest is history. But anyhow, here it gives you the ability, an excuse, to try to get in touch with that individual. You can use it or not, right? But it's, it's data that you, have, that you have available out there, right? Then, uh, obviously, you need to put in your profile. Which companies do I want to follow, right? I mean, if I would like to follow, I don't know, whatever, GE, boom, I put it up here. I want to follow GE or I want to follow whoever. On the other hand, you do not need to follow a company to understand what's happening with that company. I give you right now here an example of McKinsey, for example. You, you remember at the beginning I told you there were one million companies that are part of LinkedIn, right? McKinsey, the consulting company, is one of them, right? So I said, okay, okay, McKinsey. I put it up there in the companies. Let's look what McKinsey tells you here, right? Well, first of all, what will appear is that out of my contacts, I have two of them are in working directly in McKinsey, right? I mean, okay, well, I remember, okay, these two guys, Steve, engagement manager, and Carlo Fabrini, right? These two guys worked for me a while ago. I'm a very good friend of Carlo, right, the Italian guy. Actually, he was just texting me with the football and so on. This guy, I have to tell you, I did not get so well with them at, at work, right? I mean, we're, we, we're connected, right? I mean, we're, we're working at a, at a British company, right? We're, we're working together. But he was, yeah, he was a connection, a work colleague, etc. Right now, I, I realize, I mean, he has moved to McKinsey. When, when this came up, I congratulated him. Eh? Congratulations, he has response back, etc. We now have a, we, we kind of got in touch again, right? Anyhow, um, what tells you as well, if I do this search, McKinsey is, look, they're hiring. There were five new people that were hired, and they have a total of 20, uh, sorry, 12,000 individuals of their employees are out there in LinkedIn, right? If I really want to know something about McKinsey, perhaps I may find something out from any of those 12,000 people, right? So that's good, interesting information. What as well is very interesting is careers. You will go there and it will show you what McKinsey has to offer in terms of careers, right? It's number one. Number two, if you want to know more about the company, you can go here. Check out insightful statistics about McKinsey, right? Okay, what information you may find in there? You go there. Uh, well, I mean, uh, before I, I show you that, uh, why is this so relevant? I mean, this is very relevant if you if you try to look for uh, for jobs as well. You may be interested to know who is trying to hire you, what type of people are they tra are they hiring, right? I mean, yeah, okay, there were new hires. Are they hiring very senior people or are they hiring uh, junior people? Okay, they're hiring a lot of associates. You go into that profile of the associate. What does he have that I may have or not have, etc. It gives you it gives you some some information. Equally as well, what you could use is what I call perform blind reverse and company reference checks. I mean, if you go to an interview, try to figure out who is interviewing you, right? Is it LinkedIn? Is it not on LinkedIn? Is it you go to the company? What are people saying about that company? Are they hiring? Are they not hiring? Etc. Get some information. I mean, it's it's everything out there, right? I mean, do not enter an interview with someone that you have not tried to Google, that you have not tried to to find on on LinkedIn, right? The um, it, as I say there, I mean, it will help in your interview as well. I mean, one of the tricks is that if you if you come up with his profile, right, and you are able to see that, I mean, in many cases people write down some of their hobbies. Guess what? I mean, if it happens to be that he has a hobby that you are as well passionate about, you guys have something to talk about. Instead of just with the ner being nervous, not nervous, I mean, what's going to happen in the interview, or etc., you can break the ice. I mean, by talking about that. I mean, it happens to be I went into LinkedIn, I saw your profile, and uh, I think that you are passionate about uh, sky skydiving or whatever. I as well, I went the other day, I went skydiving, wherever, blah, blah, blah. Already, you made a, a first contact, right? Important as well. Uh, 
I told you before about these uh, statistics from the company, right? You remember this, uh, what you saw there at the corner, right? If you enter the box, right, uh, you, will, uh, you will see this, this one screen, right? And here, for example, what this tells you is uh, job functions, is the what type of job functions people have. Right at, at McKinsey, right, 83% of the people are what they call general and administrative. Okay, it doesn't say much in this case, right? R&D, 11%, executive leadership, whatever, 5%, sales and marketing, 2%. Gives you some information about the type of people that work for McKinsey based upon their LinkedIn profiles, right? As well, it compares you that information with the industry, consultant industry, right, in this case. Uh, you say, well, I want to know a little bit more about the years of experience. You can go into that tag, the, into, the, in, in, into there, into that sheet, and you will see everything about the job experience. Into the educational degree, the same, right? Okay, masters. 53% of the people that work for McKinsey have a master's degree. Interesting information. Don't you think it's a, it's, well, you may know it intuitively, right? It's, that's the case, but that's a fact, right? 6% are doctors, and there are 5% that have high school degree. Then, university attended. Where do this, where do the, where does McKinsey hire people? You say, okay, Harvard Business School, 3%. University of Pennsylvania, Wharton, 2%. In Seattle, 3%. But the data, the data is out there, right? I mean, that you make something out of it, Again, up to you, right? If you go down as well on this same uh, section of companies, you see what's the growth of McKinsey employees, right? In terms of LinkedIn profiles, as well as it's nice to see. I mean, they're growing steadily, right? To join them for whatever reason, right? I can make up a CV that will make yourself attractive to, uh, to achieve them, right? And again, I've taken this particular company because McKinsey is seen by many people as, a, as one of the best employers, right? I mean, a lot of people would like to work for McKinsey, right? These two guys that work for me, Carlo and Steve, and Steve Christie, both of them, one of them was working first, uh, he worked in a, in a university and then he worked in a, a little bit in power controls and General Electric, then he went to a company called Bombardier, then he went to work for me at First Data as a payment processing company, First Data Western Union, and then he moved to McKinsey. Is that natural? A lot of people think McKinsey, people that go, go to work for McKinsey are only people that come from a, a Ivy League type of MBA or that people that come from perhaps a place like this, Goldman Sachs, etc. And in this case, he made it through that route, right? But gives us one idea that yeah, perhaps, I mean, there are different ways to reach your target. As well as interesting as to see where people were before, my, before is to see where they went after. And guess what? Google. That means that Google is hiring a hell of a lot of people from McKinsey, right? Data. Where they call home, again, stats about uh, where their homes are, their home base, etc. So, uh, again, very interesting tool. A lot of information about the potential employer that you, that you are trying to do. Equal as well, people that looked at this profile, which were other p profiles that they looked at? Okay, they looked at, you, you may imagine, they looked at BCG, Boston Consulting Group, Bain, Accenture, Deloitte, Google, etc. Right? And uh, this is some change of titles that, that, that happened there. So that's, that's the section of companies. The next one up there is news. News is like a little bit of a newspaper, what's happening on a daily basis on your profile. And in my profile, as I'm a consultant, right, uh, what's interesting for me is Suggested industry, management consulting industry is the one that I related to, so I get a little bit of information what's happening in my industry, right? Some articles from HBR here, something that are, some slideshow presentations that come up, etc. So it's, yeah, it's some news. I mean, it's a, I, I have to say I do not look at it very often, but it's kind, kind of personalized to my profile, right? So it's, if you have some time, I mean, look once in a while there, maybe, maybe interesting. So, the, the next section is a little bit the applications. Applications is on the right hand side, and what this mainly is is tools to uh, to position yourself, right? And well, there's a lot of applications, but I just want to touch upon the the ones that I consider more more relevant, right? Um, answers is really participating on different type of things. Skills beta is what I explained to you before, and I will see some slides uh, some slides on that. Then reading list, events, polls, slideshow presentation, my travel, WordPress, tweets, blog link. These are the ones that I have, right? 
I mean, I've these, these are the ones that I'm using. Get more applications. I mean, there are so many, but I, I do not use all of them. I just, but I will show you at least the ones that I'm using that I think are uh, quite interesting. Uh, skills. It's part of the applications. I told you that before. Uh, in, you put it up there, it tells you a little bit where is it going, is it relatively growth, is it growing, is it not growing, this, uh, this particular Lean Sigma skill, right? It explains what it is, primary industry, I mean, it's pharmaceuticals, it's come up, it's, it comes up that is linked to that, to that particular industry, as well it gives you a whole lot of related skills that as well you can add to your profile, right? If, for example, you say, look, I'm good at Lean Sigma, but as well, I um, as well want to be associated with a Junka. A Junka is a tool, right? And then I as well I will click there, and then on my profile that you saw at the very beginning, it will appear as well. That as one of the skills. And these are the tag words that people look after, right? When the, the headhunters look look for, right? When they're trying to to find you. Uh, what is very interesting is that you put in your skill, and then it appears here related companies, companies that in somehow value this 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 skill. I think that's interesting information. Lynn Sigma, Glaxo, uh, Avery Denison, it, it must be that these companies, for whatever reason, they're looking after people that have this particular skill, right? So, what it means? Well, guess what? I mean, obviously, then, well, if you have that skill, great. You can try to apply for those companies. If you just write down that you have that skill, but you have no clue about it, then you at least you know what you need to, to work on, right? To make yourself your, more marketable, right? And then, what's very interesting as well is some professionals that, have, that are Lean Sigma professionals, right? If you want to know more about that particular skill, to, you can try to get in touch with them, uh, in, in touch with them. This, this thing... This skill is right now, the skill and expertise is at the beta stage. It's very, very new. People are not using it yet, but I guess that at some stage they will start using it much more, right? Because I, th I thought it was quite, quite helpful. Events. Again, this is, a, is again, it's one of the applications, and it gives you an idea what are the different events that people, that your connections have organized. I, not many people may use events, right? But the ones that use it, you have some uh, some events happening. Perhaps it interests you that AOI, for example, okay, had some sort of green week here, or this other thing is happening here at the IBM Center, right? Collector intelligence, etc. So some data that that appears around events, right? WordPress is obviously your blogs, right? It, it shows up your the, your different blogs where you write. Right, so it's a profile, but a more interesting that uh, WordPress is this other tool called a uh, block link. Block link automatically gives you all the blocks from all your connections. The, obviously, the ones that are tagged, right? And it's incredible. I mean, in this case, uh, Mark Fritz, for example, is one of my connections. I, I mean, I would have imagined that he has a block, but I was not looking after his block. But then, yeah, you have it here. You determine. You decide. Pretty good look. This guy, Daniel Ferreiro, he was a AOI uh, person from last year, right? He as well has it tagged. I mean, he has his block tagged to his LinkedIn profile, so that means that he appears there, right? Pre-owned 2011 Honda. Okay, he's trying to to sell a an Honda here, right, on his block. But I mean, but hey, I mean, at this I know that hey, Dan, are you selling a, a Honda? Okay. <laughs> Try to get in touch with you, right? Anyhow, so, but that's for the blogs. Another tool is the tweets, right? And this connection is pretty cool because you have the, uh, sorry, this tool, you have, all, it's like Twitter, you have all your different tweets up there, right? They all appear with all your, the, the different people that you are following. But more interesting, if you press here your connections, is you will see, and there's a uh, Rocio, where's Rocio? Is she over here? I mean, she appears down there. <laughs> <laughs> on, 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 <laughs> and, uh, the, here, for example, people that uh, I'm, I'm connected with, right, that as well have uh, their LinkedIn profile tagged with, with Twitter, right, and then they appear. And, for example, on these people, I mean, Rocio, uh, to, or Nuria, for example, for example, Nuria Alcala, these are two individuals that I'm not following on Twitter, but I know that they are out there, and if I want to see the tweets, I just will go there, press, and then I, I will see directly the tweets. On the other hand, for example, with Ana, with Alfonso, with Javier, I, I, I follow them on Twitter, so already I get their messages to Twitter. What I'm saying to you with that is that, again, perhaps you just forget about Twitter, you can't see absolutely everything what's happening there as well through, through LinkedIn. Uh, what's interesting, out of my 670 connections, 69 use Twitter, 20 of them are... I, I'm following them on Twitter, 49 I'm not, 
this perhaps tells me, okay, perhaps I, I, I need to follow some of those guys. Perhaps yes, perhaps no. Again, a lot of information. Answer, this is the answer sections where you have the ability to, to answer to questions that people make as well. If you have some questions you want to ask your, your network, this is the place where you can do it. And with that, I mean, I just want to wrap up very quickly. I mean, it's time to you guys, I mean, to display your leadership. It's up to you. I mean, what you, I mean it's a virtual world, right? You can, uh, you can develop your profiles and... It's, it's you. You have, you have everything at your at your hand, right? I mean, how to use that data, and as well how to how to sell yourself. Uh, some to dos that I that I recommend you to do, right? Is first of all is add connections, increase your visibility by adding some connections, uh, improve the connectability by showing all your affiliations. So if you were affiliated to certain type of schools, business schools, universities, uh, jobs, etc., show it. Make sure that they, they get uh, they get uh, an, in your LinkedIn profile. Work in your Google page rank, right? By uh, obviously adding a photo, right? Uh, if you can buy your name in an URL, I mean that's the optimal thing. I mean if you buy it on a URL as well, it will give you more more points on the Google Page Rank. Uh, write a branded headline in your LinkedIn profile. It goes back to, um, I mean you need to differentiate yourself, right? Say something something about you, right? In your summary and as well in your uh, in in your branded headline, right? Uh, uh, when you put your your job description, right? It's something useful to do. Uh, use the different keywords and skills, right? As you as you think necessary. Make sure you get 15 LinkedIn recommendations, right? On board the recommendation. Complete your profile. Get 200 connections. I mean, that's ex extreme, but I mean, work on the connection. I told you that before. You need to work on that. Make sure that you add a book list. Uh, I mean, this, this was recommended to me. I mean, add a book list. It shows, uh, it gives an idea what are you interested on. I personally have not done it, right? I've not done it, but it's, a lot of people think that it's something good to do, right? That you tell the people which book are you reading and you add this book list. Add slides or document through slideshare and obviously start blogging, right? I mean, have a blog, add your, a blog uh, and, and write on it. And other branding opportunities, just to wrap up, is what's important is, uh, I mean, you may know these tools, obviously. Fa oh, sorry. Facebook, uh, very good as well for branding yourself. Make sure that as well you segregate professional from friends, right? But as well as another opportunity, how you, what you can do to brand yourself. Then I give you as well some, uh, some advice. Zoom Info is this tool that you may see over here. Uh, Perhaps it's good that you go there and see what they say about you, if there's anything inaccurate, etc. It, these are tools to, to clean your, your profile, right? What's, what you see there on the on internet. And the same happens with names, right? Names is as well something that you can use to sanitize your profile, right? It's, they, look, I mean, it's visible me, but if you go to names.com, you, you will enter into this website, right? And it's their aim and their mission is build and protect your personal brand. If everything is about personal branding, make sure that you are in control what people say about you. And this as well could work upon, a, I mean, it, it relates them with Facebook, it relates with Twitter, it relates as well with LinkedIn, etc. I mean, make sure that you take your brand as something serious, right? And, yeah, that's basically what I just wanted to share with you. Uh, and the last tool is this visualcv.com. Visualcv.com is now, now coming to... To put together your, I mean, it's 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 not a LinkedIn, but it's a another sort of a way to present your your CV, and as well using much more visual media, videos and podcasts, etc. Right? It's more uh, it's, it's more media intensive, right? But it's an, another way to present yourself as well. You can work on it. It's not so much used in Spain, more used, I think, in in Britain and uh, and in the. In the U.S., uh, but I mean, what people are using this quite quite a lot for is when they give some sort of presentations. For example, on a, when they're trying to sell a company or when they're trying to to pitch something to private equity investors, etc. I mean, they do a lot of profiles there on VisualCV.com. They send it, and then people enter their video and they see who the person is, etc. Because these people makers do not have so much time to to see you and all your CV and all your experience, etc. They prefer just to see a 30-second, two-minutes video. About you and that's it. So, 
Yes, open it up for questions if there are any, and I hope you, you enjoyed it. Right? Any any question, comment? You knew everything, there's a lot of new things. Huh? Useful, not useful? Huh? Gives you some, some tools to... No question? Huh? Well, that's it then. I mean, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we ho I hope to see you again soon. Okay, good. <laughs>